And again, welcome to the celebration of the life of Ignacio Ponsetti. Dr. Ponsetti was a scholar, a student of the arts, a consummate physician, and a talented scientist. Equally important, he guided the personal growth and development of those that he worked closely with, those that were blessed to have the opportunity to work with him for many decades on a daily basis. This group includes Reginald Cooper, Stuart Weinstein, Paul Etry, and me. Reginald Cooper has been a member of the department for more than 50 years. He served as chairman from 1973 until 1999. When Reg joined the department as a confident young resident in 1957, Dr. Ponsetti was already a senior member of the faculty. He had been here for 16 years. For the next 52 years, Reg was one of those fortunate individuals who had the opportunity to work so closely with Dr. Ponsetti and to be influenced by him, Reg Cooper. Thank you, Judy. Helena, Bill, family, and friends, with a profound sense of honor, respect, admiration, and humility, I join you in this memorial celebration of the unique life of Dr. Ponsetti. My exceptionally fortunate association with him in a variety of capacities spanned 54 years. The task of delineating even a fleeting glimpse into the life, character, and personality of such an absolutely wonderful human overwhelms me. Surely the quality of individuals defines a great university. Relatively few have made an impact upon the University of Iowa as did Dr. Ponsetti. A few persons stamp our lives with an indelible imprint which influences us profoundly. This includes parents, spouse, friends, and as we in academia firmly believe, teachers. First, Dr. Ponsetti became my teacher when as an intern and orthopedic resident at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics I rotated onto his green team, an appropriate color since he loved and respected nature in all of its aspects long before going green was a popular mantra. Even in my naivety in those nascent professional years, I immediately recognized greatness in this professor whose dedication to teaching, impeccable patient care, and research in an attempt to answer many of the critical questions about the musculoskeletal system consumed a major portion of his life. He succeeded in instilling into his students an insatiable desire to emulate his stellar qualities. His approach to children with so many serious diseases and disorders and to their parents represented an exemplary lesson in professionalism in its most exalted sense. His God-given talents of kindness, gentleness, concern, curiosity, and dedication were transmitted in a style as contagious as the polio and tuberculosis that we were dealing with. He subscribed fully to the theory of Robert Hutchins that Education is not to reform students or to make them expert technicians. It is to unsettle their minds, widen their horizons, inflame their intellects, and teach them to think straight if possible. In the second stage of our association, I became Ignacio's colleague. Words fail to describe his unworthy unwavering support for me during my formative years as a young faculty member. He arranged for me to go to Johns Hopkins in Baltimore to study electron microscopy on a National Institutes of Health grant with his good friend, Dr. Robert Robinson. That fantastic opportunity set the direction for my subsequent career. Dr. Ponsetti established an outstanding biochemistry laboratory in the orthopedic department and he helped me assemble an electron microscope laboratory. 
He and I collaborated on many combined ultrastructural, biochemical, and clinical studies. He taught me the absolute necessity of having clinical and laboratory scientists working cooperatively to provide multidisciplinary and translational research wherein a clinical question generated the ideas for research. Ignacio remained devoted to this concept all of his life. I would submit that no one better typifies the axiom of Einstein that intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. In the third part of our association, Ignacio strongly supported my candidacy for chairman of orthopedics. When I succeeded in this quest, he had only one request for me as chairman. He said, let me care for my babies, teach and do research, and never involve me in administrative activities <laughs> and in those committees with their endless and many times pointless meetings, unquote. Need I say more about the wisdom of this great man? <laughs> Would that all faculty members articulated their objectives so clearly. The overarching goal of the orthopedic department remained the teaching of exemplary patient care with the implied obligation to find new and better methods of treatment. Ignacio represented the epitome of this mission. His contributions to the department are far too numerous to mention, if in fact I could list all of them. His expertise in patient care and research added immeasurably to the reputation of Iowa orthopedics locally, nationally, regionally, and internationally. Perhaps a lesser known but absolutely vital incident in the history of our department was his pivotal role in bringing Dr. Carol Larson here as chairman of the department in 1950. The dean picked Dr. Ponsetti from a small search group to go to Boston to interview Dr. Larson. This included an interview with a world famous hip surgeon with whom Dr. Larson practiced and who did not want him to leave. Ignacio said that he received a real, quote, tongue lashing, unquote, which he described to me in great detail. Nevertheless, he succeeded in convincing Carol Larson to come here, and over the years, Ignacio convinced me that several of the other candidates for chairman, if chosen, would not have allowed the department to achieve the stature that it did. In the last stage of our association, circumstances provided us with the time over the past several years for numerous extensive discussions. Especially during the last two years, he would tell Linda to send me to his office where, after his siesta, of course, we spent countless unforgettable hours discussing history, philosophy, literature, religion, music, art, his medical career in the Civil War in Spain, persons who had put their imprint upon world orthopedics and his definite opinions about various individuals. I learned anew and in greater detail about his practice in the Spanish Civil War where he had an operating room in a railroad car. He told me of his rather precipitous exodus from Spain and about his journey to practice medicine in a small village in Mexico. <clears throat> in one of the many humorous stories, he told me that when he left Mexico, he knew immediately when he crossed the border because he could not see the ribs in the fat dogs in the United States. <clears throat> Several months ago, as the press of time accelerated, our dialogue became more focused as he expressed his frustrations with a sense of urgency, especially about spreading the cure for clubfoot and about the need to answer some new questions and some of the old ones that we had struggled with for over 50 years. Perhaps only pride in his family surpassed his well-justified satisfaction with his career. This was typified so dramatically recently by a chance meeting at one of his and Helena's favorite restaurants. He was with Helena, his son Bill, and his grandchildren. I had never seen him so happy when, with a twinkle <clears throat> in his eye, 
and a face that actually beamed, he turned to Mary and me and said, I have a beautiful family. As we forever relive memories of him, perhaps as I do, you might want to replay some of these memories against a glorious backdrop with a tranquil and serene Dr. Ponsetti encompassed by that absolute and perfect peace that transcends human understanding. So Ignacio, my teacher, my colleague, and my longtime friend, rest well in that eternal siesta. <laughs>